this video I'm going to demonstrate the Bickford seam. It's uh, an alternative to the mattress stitch and the reason the Bickford seam is notable is because it doesn't leave a ridge in the work and we'll talk about more about how it's used in a moment. This video is sponsored by Eucalan. Eucalan is the wool soap that I use on, or it's the uh, fiber wash that I use on all of my hand knits. They have five different scents, eucalyptus, lavender, grapefruit, jasmine, and unscented. I'm always so proud of myself when I can get all six. I personally love the, ra the rapture, the jasmine. That is my scent. It is what clean knitting smells like to me. And a little bit more, uh, Eucalan has been in business for 25 years. Their non-toxic solution is formulated without petrochemicals, bleach, or optical brighteners, making it safe and gentle for your most luxurious fibers and heirloom knits. And they sell the little bottles like, they sell, I use the big giant bottle for my, for my business, but little bottles like this or little packets, which are great to include if you're giving away hand knit gifts for the holidays or birthdays or whatever, because the person you're giving the gift to will have good fiber wash to care for that gift. Anyway, many thanks to you, Glenn. We're gonna talk more about the Bickford seam. Um, the Bickford seam, like I said, it's a way of seaming two pieces together without a ridge, which I'm sure is very attractive people listening to this. The thing is, it's not as sturdy as mattress stitch. I'll give you a link to uh, my mattress stitch video. Just click the little I so you can um, see the technique difference. The people who I think are gonna be most excited about this are people who um, are knitting for themselves or others who are sensitive to the feeling of seams against the skin. And um, this is a weight that you can avoid the seam. It's just not a great choice if there's going to be a lot of pressure on the seam. The way that it would be a good, a good choice is if you're knitting, let's say a hat, and the brim of the hat is a cable that's knit um, horizontally, you know, and so you actually have to pick up stitches and there has to be a seam. It's, I can picture a seam that you'd need to make in a hat where this would, this would be necessary. And a seam in a hat like that would actually be sensitive to a lot of people. You wouldn't really want a ridge on that seam. That's a good choice. Something like um, the shoulder of a sweater, uh, not such a good choice because you have the weight of the sweater on that shoulder seam. You probably wanna stick with mattress stitch in that case or even a three needle bind off in that case. But let's go ahead and take, I'm gonna show you how this works. Well, I wanna say one other thing. This is how I was thinking about this. Let's say you're hanging ornaments on a Christmas tree and you have a really heavy ornament you're gonna to wanna to hang that ornament closer to the trunk of the tree to support it and not way out on the end of a branch, right? Hanging that ornament closer to the trunk of the tree is mattress stitch. And out on the end of the branch, you can hang lighter ornaments. That's the Bickford seam. Uh, looks good, it's out there right out front, looks great, but it's just not going to be as sturdy. Okay, that's how I was thinking about this. Hopefully that helps some people. Okay, let's take a look. This first is the mattress stitch. You can see it looks great. Uh, and there is a significant ridge on the back. This is worsted weight yarn. This is the go-to all-purpose seam for just about everything. And then this, which one am I gonna show you? This one first. This is the Bickford seam. In the gauge that I'm knitting in straight stockinette, you can see there's a little bit of a disruption to the stitches, but it looks pretty good. And most significantly, there is no seam on the back, no ridge on the back. And then I have one more sample I wanna show you here because if you've seen my other seaming videos, I like to stitch and keep it loose and then tighten the whole thing up all at once. And then, you know, like this and then straighten it out. Not a good idea in the Bickford seam. It actually pulls it so, <laughs> You want to just keep it a good tension throughout and not do the magic moment thing that I love to do. It, um, it pulled those stitches and I ended up having to uh, do another example. This one here. This is the one where I'm keeping good tension. Okay, this is the technique. Um, which way do I want to do this? I want to do it this way. Sometimes I like to seam this way. I'm going to seam this way today. So we are going to be paying attention to the V's at the edge of the work. And we're going to be grabbing the inside leg of these V's. And I've seen some instructions for how to do this that make it more complicated than it is. We're just working with the inside leg of the V's. Okay, and that might require that you have to 
it might require you to roll this out a little bit so you're looking at the very edge and not the second stitch in. All right. I'm going to go down into the next stitch, the V, and then across and up into the next stitch, the inside leg of the V, and pull it with nice, even, smooth tension, and then down into the inside leg of the next V, and up through the inside leg of the other side. down into the inside leg of the next V, and up through the next, the inside leg of the next V on the other side. I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. So down, across, up, down, across, up. And the thing you just really want to pay attention to is that you're not skipping stitches or going into the same stitch twice. And so if you're doing the seam on something that has tiny stitches or dark yarn, just make sure you have a lot of good light. And then if I'm unsure about where the next, I was unsure about the next stitch, so I just pulled it apart a little bit. I see my next stitches here. So it's down, across, up, down, across, up, keeping good tension. And it looks good, and there's no ridge. So that's the Bickford seam. Uh, feel free to share in the comments about how you think you can put this seam to use. I'm really stuck on mattress stitch for just about everything. I don't pull the Bickford seam out unless it's actually called for in a pattern. It's a good technique to have. Many thanks to Euclon for sponsoring this video. Good luck.